Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Tanale Bisut. Um, today, I will be um, co-presenting with my colleague, um, Chao Han. She is a data scientist, and she is too shy to stand up right now. So um, <laughs> you will get to meet her pretty soon. So, um, okay. so here is the outline for the talk today. Okay, so I will be um, presenting the easy stuff and um, Chao is going to be presenting the hardcore stuff. Okay. So I will go over the um, Apache Zeppelin, okay. what is Apache Zeppelin, and how can we use it with the solar backend. Okay. And that is the solar interpreter. So um, we're going to go over the uh, installation step, okay. how to set up um, the interpreter, and then we're going to do um, dive into the demo, which is to show you the example of the command, how you can contribute to the project and add your own custom command. Okay, it's pretty easy. It's just like uh, one or two files that you have to um, add the code to it. And then Chao gonna take over the other half of the, of the talk today to show you um, how to actually use the Zeppelin with Fusion Spark cluster so that you can do more, um, more heavy and intensive analysis on your own data. So she has some of the use case that she's been working with uh, different clients. Uh, one of it is a head and tail, and she has you know, some you know, interesting demo to show you at the end of the talk today. Okay? And I also would like to give a credit to another coworker, which is Kiran, okay, sitting next to Chow. So he is actually the one who started this project. Okay. okay so first is um, an overview of object Zeppelin. How many of you have used Zeppelin by now? Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So, um, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> no, no, that's actually less than 50% of the people who raised their hand, so, so I have to talk to the slide, okay? So Zeppelin is actually very um, similar to the Python notebook, okay? I think now they call it Jupyter notebook. So very popular amongst the um, machine learning people. You know, they do all this cool stuff with the Python notebook, okay? But what makes Zeppelin um, different is that um, Zeppelin come, you know, built in with uh, Spark integration. So you don't have to, you know, set up anything. It just work, you know, out of the box, okay? You don't need to add the library and some stuff like that, okay? So uh, other than that, Zeppelin is pretty much, you know, visually look the same like a Jupyter notebook, right? So you have um, the functionality that you can, you know, do like a wiki-like, right? You can annotate, you can include the note. You know, if you are the teacher or professor, you can actually including some kind of the content and then you have um, a chart or maybe embed the code in there and you can run it real time okay, to show the result. Okay, so it's pretty easy and a good um, interactive learning tool okay, for your class. So with the Zeppelin, okay, you're not limited to just you know, one language or the back end. You can actually use a SQL Scholar, okay, which is you know very Spark centric, right? To do um, the computation and stuff. Okay. So by um, def out of the box, oops. Okay. No, okay, maybe I hit something. So out of the box, Zeppelin actually. Okay, sorry about that. So out of the box, Zeppelin support um, different languages, okay? Most of the popular ones, okay, like the uh, Cassandra, R, and Hive, okay? Um, the main uh, component that allow Zeppelin to support all of these um, backend languages is the interpreter. So if you need to support your own language, you have to develop your own um, interpreter and then use it in uh, Zeppelin. And to do that, uh, I can sh show you um, like a very simple diagram and you know, high level of how, um, how we build the solar interpreter to work with the Zeppelin. Okay. So on the left-hand side, you have like a, you know, a user into the query, okay, solar query into the Zeppelin UI, the notebook, right? And then the notebook will send that query to the interpreter in this case, it's a solar interpreter. So you can think of the interpreter like, um, like a middleware, you know, basically a middleware adapter, 
that translate the Zeppelin specific language into the solar specific syntax, okay? And then the inter interpreter, you know, send the request to solar backend. Solar backend, you know, spit out the response back. Then interpreter have to format solar response into the Zeppelin specific format so that Zeppelin can visualize the result and allow you to, you know, not only show the result in the table format, but in the graph as well, okay? So we will see all of this in the demo. Okay, so the installation. Um, to install the Zeppelin is pretty easy. Um, the version that we use um, in the demo is 0 0.7.1. I believe the latest one is .2, okay? So you just download the tarball, okay, Zeppelin. There are two versions in, um, on the website. One is, uh, you know, like a smaller one. It comes with just the Spark interpreter. And another um, download is a, it's a very big one. It comes with all the interpreter that Zeppelin support, okay? So what you need um, is just the first one, the smaller one, okay? So once you download the Zeppelin um, tarball, you just, you know, untie it, and then just go into the binary directory, the bin directory, and just start the Zeppelin. So that's pretty easy. But before you do that, right, you um, run the second command to install the solar interpreter first. Okay, so, um, you know, just type exactly like the second um, line there. The current version that we have right now um, is the beta 2, it's 0 0.0.1, .0 so super early, you know, but uh, we're gonna keep adding some new stuff to it, okay, and we are welcome, you know, all the comments and um, criticism too. So once you install the interpreter, it's just one liner, you know, easy, it's gonna go and download interpreter on, online, and then you just um, start Zeppelin. Um, when you start Zeppelin, then you, need to start solar as well, okay? But in this case, you need to start solar in cloud mode because um, we support only the cloud mode right now, okay? If you start uh, standalone solar, it's not gonna work because uh, the interpreter will talk with Zookeeper, okay? That's why we need the solar cloud. So the last step, uh, number four, you have to create uh, a new interpreter setting in the Zeppelin. Okay, so not only you install it, right, you have to create the setting so that um, the notebook aware of, okay, so this notebook gonna be working with the solar interpreter, okay, which is also pretty easy to configure. It's just uh, one setting. So basically you just tell the notebook to talk to um, the location of the zookeeper, okay. So in this case, it's, um, it's a local host 9983. Um, you know, if you doesn't change the default zookeeper, um, port number, then that's the one that you have to put into the notebook. But if you use the Fusion Solar, then you have to um, put in the Zookeeper host address, um, you know, a little longer, okay. So it's gonna be in the slash um, wfusion slash 3.1.0 and slash solar, okay. So when you get all the setup, then you are ready to, you know, use the notebook and, you know, test out some commands that um, gonna interact with the solar, okay. So I'm gonna show this one in the demo as well, but I want to run through it quickly first, okay. So this is, um, these are the current support command right now that we have, okay. So the first command is, you know, it's pretty straightforward, it's a list command. So you type the list, it's gonna, the interpreter gonna send the query to solar and get all the collection that you have in solar cloud and just show you. Then the second command is pretty important because um, you have to, use the second command, we see the use followed by the collection name. It's gonna set the collection that you want to use with the notebook, okay? So with, without the second command, the notebook not gonna be able to work or know where to get the data from. So you have to use, issue the second command in order to use it, okay? Then um, the third command, the search, okay, followed by um, any valid solar search query. That one actually gonna send the, you know, the search query that you enter straight to um, solar backend and get the response back, okay? So the advantage of using the search command in Zeppelin is that you get the visualization stuff for free, okay? And the facet command is really similar, okay? It's just sending the search facet command, okay? So you get back, you know, the facet result. That's, that's all, okay? And the fifth command is a SQL. So this one is solar SQL command 
okay? Not to be confused with the Spark Solar, it's different, okay? So whatever Solar support with the SQL query, then you can use it in here. And the last one I think is, is the coolest, is the streaming expression, okay? So you can submit any valid Solar streaming expression and it's gonna work too with the interpreter. But right now, um, the well, disclaimer, not all the command is gonna work to the interpreter, but it's still work in the progress. Okay, we only test some of the command right now. So if you find any issue, then you're welcome to file the Jira or the GitHub issue so we can fix it. Okay. Okay. So if you would like to contribute to the project or you have um, some um, custom command that you want to add, okay, so here's how you can do it, okay. Basically, the first file, interpreter setting.json, I think that one you don't really have to touch it, but I just want to put it there just in case, you know, that's something you need. Pretty much, um, this interpreter setting is gonna set like a metadata about the interpreter, you know, what is the description, what is the version number, what is the default value for each of the setting that you want for, um, for the interpreter to have in the UI, okay? So if you just want to add custom command, then I think you can just skip this file. What you want to focus on is the second file. It's a Java file um, called Solar Interpreter, because that is the meat of the interpreter, okay? So all the command that you've seen, you know, the list command, the use command, the SQL and the stream command, is all live in this file, in the Java file. So that's where all the logic and uh, command implementation that you have to put in. I'm gonna show you the, the source code uh, in a bit. And the third file is actually a Scala file, okay? So this file, um, Kiran, he um, used some, reused some of the code from the Spark Solar project, okay? So you can think of the third file more like um, utility file, you know, contain all the utility function where all the interaction between the interpreter and Solar backend happen. Okay, so you can just you know, reuse the method and you don't have to you know, add anything to it, okay? Okay, so let me show you some of the source code here. So. Okay. okay, so this file, the Solar interpreter.java, okay. Using me, okay. It should be big enough. Okay, cool. So this file, okay. So let's um, scroll to the main file, the main method right here. So interpret, okay. So that's um, the main um, function that you have to modify. If you look, right, so if you look here, well, what right now, since it's like, you know, 0 .0 0.0.1, you know, super early version, <laughs> we didn't like do any fancy stuff in the code, right? So we just have like a simple if, you know, if else condition. So if the command, right, is the list command, then we return um, the re interpreter result, which is uh, Zeppelin interpreter specific format result, okay? So we need to like confirm, uh, what do you call, uh, conform to this format. Otherwise, simply not going to be able to visualize the result back. Okay, and it's pretty simple um, for the, the class here. The result, pretty much, you just have to um, uh, return like if this is the success response. What is the type of the response that you have? Usually, it's just going to be a text. Okay, and then um, the the array that contain the the uh, the result, pretty much. Okay, so if you want to add your own custom command, right? Basically, you just add another if cost right here. You know, if uh, the string of the command is you know, matched your command that you want to add. For example, maybe you want to add like a pivot, for example, which we have time to do that, right? To support the pivot facet in um, Solar, which is the powerful. Then you can say, you know, if pivot, you know, dot equal to argument zero, then you want to do, you know, one, two, and three. Okay, so um, now let me get into my um, demo. Oh, sorry, why is it's too small? Ah, okay, here. Okay. So this is what um, Zeppelin look like. So let me start from the first step though. Let's see if you, let's assume that you don't have um, this notebook, right? 
what you want to do first, right, after you install Zeppelin and you install the interpreter, you want to go to the, um, this menu on the top right here and go to the interpreter. Okay. Then you want to create the interpreter for the solar. Okay. So you would click on the create right here, right? Enter the name of the interpreter, you know, solar something to, oh, sorry. No, this one is actually for searching. <laughs> I have to read down here. Okay. So you enter the name for the solar, inter for the interpreter. Okay. Then you select the group. It's going to be solar. And you can see that the default um, property just pop up. Okay. So by default, it's going to point to the solar, uh, default solar zookeeper port. Okay. But if you use Fusion, um, like in the demo, then you have to, you know, at the slash w fusion and slash the version number and slash, um, I forgot. Solar. Solar, thank you. Yeah. Because um, the jet lag kind of kick in right now. Since I just get here um, yesterday. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Then you just um, go to the save button and you save. Easy. Then you go to the notebook page, right? You create a new notebook and just say that um, use the, that interpreter as a default for the notebook, okay? So in this case, I already have a notebook set up that um, use the solar interpreter as a default backend. So that's, um, I can run all these command, okay, here. So if you run this command, the list command, it's gonna go to the solar and you know, get the list of all the collection that you have in the solar right now. Then the second command is the use, which collection that you want to use to visualize the data. In this case, I have the movie lens data. So I say uh, use movies. And then you're gonna get uh, the result back from the movies collection and then display it. And what, uh, what cool about it is that you can change the different, um, to a different type of uh, visualization, you know, automatically, oh, but, but over here, it's, it's probably not like um, a good field to um, visualize. So let's move to the second com uh, the third command better, which is the third command. Okay. So here, you can see that you can submit any valid solar query, and it's just going to run it and display the result as a table here. So in this case, I search for um, any name of the actor or the movie as a Campbell and then filter only three field, okay, on the title, year, and actor. So once you get the result back as a table right here, you can, you know, click on the bar chart here, and Zeppelin gonna automatically convert that um, data into the type of chart that you want, okay, on the fly. Okay. So same thing with the facet command, okay? So here you can say, you know, whatever the query is, and we're gonna, um, right now you have to say a facet equal to two, but in the next version, we're gonna remove it since it's kind of redundant that you say a facet and then you have to say facet equal to two again, okay? And you wanna say a facet on the field gender, okay? And then this is the result of that, okay? So you can see. So again, same thing with the SQL. Okay, again, this one is a solar SQL, which is gonna be different from what Chow gonna show you because on child demo, it's gonna be Spark SQL, okay? Or, the, or Fusion SQL specifically, okay? So this one, whatever solar support in the SQL format, then it's gonna support through the interpreter as well. Okay, okay so, um, and the last command here that I want to show you is the stream, streaming expression, okay? So this is the, um, the valid streaming expression that you can send to, um, Solar. So basically, I want to display um, the rating and the average. Well, well it, it doesn't make much sense though, because the rating is one, two, three, four, five. So, but um, I couldn't find um, the the good data set to like to show. So I just want to show the capability of the sampling. Okay, and then we can have the count of um, the movie that get you know excellent rating or you know five star rating. How many count you have, and you know and for rating, how many cows you have, you know, et cetera, okay? And again, if you don't like the table view, then you can just change it to like a different one, okay? Okay. 
Okay, so now um, I will hand it over to Chow. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chow Han, and uh, I'm the data scientist at Lucy Works. So uh, similar to other data scientists, I really like Notebook because uh, in Notebook you can put your code and run your code and uh, put all the beautiful charts and tables uh, together with a markdown language. So this is, I write this part using the markdown language. And then very conveniently, you can put mathematical formulas in this markdown language. Then you have explanation, charts, and results, and code everything together. And you can easily share with other people through HTML or URL, just so sh to show how other people how smart you are. Uh, then uh, today I would like to talk about how to connect Zeppelin uh, to Fusion. So uh, as you may already know, uh, Fusion is our flagship uh, uh, software. And uh, in Fusion, we kind of marry Spark and Solar together to utilize Spark's fast in-memory computing, also the machine learning features. Um, now, if we connect Zeppelin with Fusion, uh, we can take advantage of Zeppelin's uh, virtualization feature, uh, multiple language support, and uh, Fusion's uh, Spark setup. Also, if we include the Fusion jar uh, here, then uh, we can take advantage of all the Fusion analytical module we have built for you. Uh, the setup is actually uh, pretty simple. Uh, you first uh, have to specify where is your Spark home. And if you don't specify the Spark home to the Fusion Spark, uh, then Spark interpreter will run in local mode with Zeppelin's its own included version. Uh, the next step is to edit the master property in the Spark in, in Predator. Uh, the value may vary depending on your Spark cluster deployment type. What it means like uh, Fusion support uh, the, the deployment type such as YARN or Mesos. Uh, but here I'm running on my own computer, so I just uh, use the standalone mode. Uh, you just tell it works your Spark master and then the Spark shell in the, this argument, and then it will can pick up the, the, the Spark interpreter. And last, you include the Fusion jar on the driver and the executor uh, class path through this uh, Spark options. Then you can have all the uh, modules we have in Fusion. After the setup, uh, uh, and then you can put those comments in the Zeppelin its own config or easily push in, uh, put in the batch RC. Then you can go to the Zeppelin folder and, and uh, use the bin start. Now let's see uh, what kind of analysis we can do using Zeppelin with Spark. Uh, here I would like to demo a simple signal data analysis with uh, the Best Buy customer data dataset uh, from Kaggle. Uh, in Fusion, uh, you can set up some uh, cookie tracker such as Snowplow and connect with Fusion and then save the uh, customer's signal data in a, into a uh, Fusion collection. Uh, by customer signal data, I mean uh, the tracking customer's behavior, such as click and add to cart and purchase, and then uh, what facets they apply. Then in the Fusion co collection, it's the, this is what the raw signal looks like. It's like uh, the count is one because it's before aggregation. Then what's the product ID? Uh, what's the query issued? and uh, what's the timestamp, what's the user ID. And this is the data that uh, lives in Fusion, uh, which means it, it lives in the solar collection. Uh, in order to read in into Spark, uh, uh, so Spark supports several uh, kinds of uh, uh, data source. For example, by default, uh, Spark support read table from uh, CSV, Parkit, uh, uh, and a Hive table, uh, a text file, uh, but it do not by default support Solar. And then uh, the brilliant data engineer at uh, LucyWork worked on a project that support uh, Solar as a new type of data source. Then it's pretty easily, because we already include the Fusion jar, this uh, Spark uh, Solar su support class is already included. You can simply use spark.read.phone.mySolar 
to read data from a solar collection into a Spark data frame. And then we provide very flexible options for read. read. For example, you can see uh, which collection you want to read from, then uh, what's the query, and then you can select certain type of rows uh, through this query, then which fields you want to read in. You may not want all the fields. Then you can simply say read for my solar and option using this reading option, then load. Uh, what it happens is like uh, if you're reading data and save at a Spark data frame. So the Spark data frame is uh, just a distributed collection of data uh, which is organized into name the, name the columns. So conceptually it's equivalent to a relational table or you can understand it as very similar uh, structure to uh, the data frame in Python and R, but with, with much better optimization techniques under the hood. And after the reading, you can use the show method to uh, see the data frame in the tabular format. Uh, here, I got the count, the document ID, queries. Uh, in this data, I only get the click type and the user ID and the timestamp. Uh, under the hood of, uh, of the data frame, uh, uh, data frame is uh, a programming abstraction of a Spark SQL. So Spark SQL is the Spark module for processing uh, structured data. So as you can see, uh, although it's a data frame, uh, it, it's a data frame, it's not SQL, but it's providing some function like similar to SQL. Here, what I want to do is to uh, sum up the data uh, aggregated by date, then it has function like group by, uh, count, and filter, and, so, uh, and sort. And after you aggregate the data, you can use Zeppelin to visualize it. Uh, it's, here is a little bit annoying in Zeppelin, like in order to use its visualization uh, features, you have to first uh, save your data frame into a, a temporary uh, SQL table. Then you use the SQL inter interpreter in Zeppelin to select uh, the grab the data from your table and visualize it. So as shown by Andrew, it, it provides uh, several different type of charts. Um, and you can select the ch charts you like. Uh, a little bit cool tool is like a, if you have many data and then you want to zoom in on a certain part, you can just uh, drag and zoom and see with a focus the view. And then you can control in this this part uh, under the main plot. Another way to do data aggregation is directly use the spark.sql method. Uh, for people not very familiar with uh, data frame and Scala, but uh, familiar with uh, SQL language, then the good news is like you can directly use the spark SQL method and put your SQL statement as a stream here. And and uh, since uh, Spark SQL is using the front end the metadata from a Hive, so it's just a basically simple Hive SQL syntax. Uh, here what I'm doing is uh, I aggregate data uh, over query and uh, product ID. So you can see uh, I, for each query and for each product ID, I sum up how many times uh, for, for it, people issue this query, how many times they click on this document. And then this is basically a very simple clickstream uh, model. Uh, uh, so what clickstream do is like uh, you use this uh, signal data and then you save this data back to a solar collection. Then when people uh, next time you search, you boost on the document uh, have more weights, which means it's based on history, this document they click it uh, by many times then it can, you can improve the relevancy by a lot. Here I'm just uh, using a very simple, just to aggregate by click, number of clicks, and you boost on the number of clicks. And you can do fancy stuff, for example, if you have uh, order data, you can do a weighted average between the number of clicks and then uh, the price times purchase, then get a balance between the relevancy and your revenue uh, to get a good AOV or good relevancy. Uh, and if you are very lucky, you have a good amount of labeled data, you can do fancy stuff like uh, learning to rank. And inside this click stream and solar uh, uh, click thing, uh, rather than outside, uh, outside uh, a click stream collection. The next thing I would like to show, like uh, since I use both uh, Scala and Python very heavily, 
uh, I really want something like, uh, because sometimes uh, uh, there's a Python package uh, exists you really want to use, but uh, the algorithm does not, does not exist in Scala. Here, what we can do is like, uh, in Zeppelin, the Scala Python R environment uh, share the same Spark session. Then you can conveniently share this, the data uh, between uh, different language. For example, here I, I grab all the queries and then say, uh, this is a, and save as a data frame, the curious data frame. This is a Scala data frame. Then I dump it into a, a SQL table. And on the other side, I use the Python interpreter and grab the data out using spark.table. Then I can import some Python package. Since uh, Zapping have limited realization tool, but Python have a very good realization package called MATLAB, uh, Matplotlab. Then also you can uh, import some other analytical package. For example, I, here I'm using a word cloud. Then I'm actually using a Python package uh, uh, on top of a data set I generated using Scala. And here is the, the word cloud. The next part I want to show is like, uh, since we incorporate the Fusion jar, then you can conveniently use the Fusion analytic tools we provide. Uh, this is a new functionality uh, we will provide in the new release, which is coming in October. Uh, in Fusion 4.0, we provide a series of analysis called head-tail analysis. Um, you can, uh, import our machine learning NLP package, then in has tail analysis, you just input where's your data, what's your query, and what's your count. And it automatically generates a series of analytical plots and charts and results to help you understand what's your tail problem. Uh, here in the overview, at first, I look at the head tail plot. So the definition of a head tail in my case is like the head queries, or the queries feeds to a lot of click, and then the tail query is just the problematic query that don't lead to much click. So for this specified data set, you can see it has a very severe tail problem. Um, uh, so uh, what, we, uh, what we provide is, uh, is like we automatic, help you automatically decide where's the head, where's the tail, and we append a field called segment. And then in the segment, it label for each query, whether it's a head query or it's a tail query. Now in Zeppelin, it's kind of, you can do some simple pivot table thing. You can say, where's the X, where's the Y? And then the groups will give you a different color. So here you can see the dark blue is the head, head part. Uh, the head query contribute to 72% of your total traffic. And then you have a very long tail, and then each part of the tail only like, contribute to 0.2% of the traffic. We also provide, a com as a companion with the plot, is uh, some summary table to help you understand uh, the head-tail head -tail plot. Here we say there's uh, about 250K unique queries, and then what's the overall skillness of this di distribution? And the top 100 head contribute to about 21% of total traffic, and 75% traffic are coming from only about 4,000 heads. Uh, the last 1% of total traffic spread it in like 30K uh, tails. And then there's uh, like uh, 190K uh, uh, queries have uh, traffic less than five. Uh, and of course, we tell you where's the head and where's the tail. If you want to uh, dig deeper to look at what are the head tail queries, what's the tail queries, we have a deep dive table like uh, your top, top query in this data set uh, is LCD TV, and then it gives you how many traffic, and this traffic is almost 1% almost of your click. Also, we provide the token-wise, the top tokens is TV, laptop, uh, HP. Uh, on the string size-wide, uh, on average, uh, it's like uh, there's uh, 15 characters in the query, and 21% have one word in it, and 40% have two words in it. And you can see people like to issue query longer or shorter. And the coolest part, I think, is like uh, 
will automatically help you investigate the tail reasons. Um, we, we kind of look into many different data sets and then summarize what are the common tail reasons. We also provide options through dictionary for the user, using can provide a dictionary and then we can, can now do a regex in, in, the, in behind and find out uh, the tail reasons. Uh, for example, here it's like 16% of tail is beca because of a misspelling and then some is because it's a very specific query, like looking for a very specific product. And uh, if, the, if the user give me a list of the brown or color, and then I can tell you how many tail is because of a, a hard to find brown. And most interestingly for this data set, the biggest problem is number. So if you look at the details, you can see the number is because uh, people search for 37 inch LCD TV, but in their catalog, they don't have inch in it. They use quote. So, but there's people just search for 37 LCD TV and leads to a lot of click. Then in this way, you can find out why there's like, a, where the problem, where's your biggest problem? Then what kind of solar configuration you need to change? And most importantly, where's the gap between your search query and your catalog? And uh, here we can see numbers of problem that maybe solar uh, didn't do a good job in tokenize the dimension attribute. And even cooler, we have uh, automatic tail query rewriting algorithm that we can suggest the correct query. Uh, for example, if it's a misspelling Sony digital camera, and we find the correct spelling for you. Uh, and then the recent code is spelling. And for this one, outdoor rock speaker. So anyone heard of a rock speaker? It's just a rock shaped speaker you can put in your front door. So if you don't do special treatment, then what you got is all kind of outdoor speaker, but not necessarily to the rock speaker. And our algorithm behind can separate the specific descriptive part from the main body. So it automatically separates, this is the outdoor speaker, and then this is the rock speaker. And I boost on rock, and I will get rock speaker on the top. Uh, and similarly, this is the automatic rewriting of the number, and then automatically boost, uh, like a separating the color and the brown. Uh, also, some people like have typo of one extra stop words, we will trim it for you. Uh, Additionally, uh, in 4.0, we will provide some uh, intelligent ALP, uh, NLP features. Uh, for example, we will provide automatic signal name. Then it's uh, based on the signal data. Uh, we can find PlayStation, some people say it's PS, and then Samsung Galaxy is actually just Galaxy, uh, and then booster like a charger is power. Uh, usually, the company spend a lot of time building ontology uh, and a lot of manpower and hours. Here, machine learning can help you find this uh, automatically and very comprehensively. Huh? Yeah. Um, another thing is available uh, in uh, 4.0 is we provide token-wise misspelling. So, uh, basically, uh, we, this is a better way to do the things like solar autocorrection cannot do. Uh, in a solar autocorrection, for one misspelling, there can be uh, multiple possible corrections. Then in this algorithm behind, we compare all the possible corrections and choose the best one based on multiple factors. Uh, then we do the token-wise and the freeze-wise. And the way to use this output, you can directly put it together with this signal name list and then put it into the signal, uh, solar signal name list to do the autocorrection in addition to the solar autocorrect. And at last, uh, uh, in Fusion 3.0, we already provide the uh, uh, auto freezing to help you find things in better context. Uh, that's all I got, any questions? Uh, 
No. So I'm using Spark, like a Spark interpreter. He don't have any Spark thing in it. He's pure solar. Yes. So my um, demo is just going to be um, solar backend, talk to the solar interpreter, and Zeppelin, and that's it. So we don't use, um, so I don't use the Spark at all. In, in so my case. what I use is like the LucyWorks Spark Solar uh, support to let you read a solar collection into Spark. That's the part like kind of related to solar. And the rest, I just use pure so Spark. No, no, no. Yeah. Just show you how to connect that in the future. Yeah, so there are several. So there, are, just so I want to clarify, there are several SQL we are talking about. One type of SQL is Solar SQL, and then the other type of SQL is Spark SQL. And then, like, we're building a Fusion SQL, kind of a cherry pick when certain things happen we should use the solar SQL or Spark SQL because there are uh, things like a solar is definitely faster than Spark, for example, the faceting and uh, simple counting. And then there are things like Spark is much faster. And then in Fusion, we provide a combination like uh, uh, to pick when you do this, what we should use. Uh, because, like, by default, uh, Spark don't support uh, the data source of solar. It supports other data source. But, uh, but our engineer have a project, like, uh, can help you read solar collection into Spark. That's, and then, then those code are in that jar, so. This is not a course. They, they just download raw Zeppelin off the web, and then there's a command install interpreter. Yes. I don't know if you have that handy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we have multi value oh, okay. support, right? That <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's actually the job of the solar interpreter. Yeah, so in the interpreter, we have to write the code to, you know, format the, the result. Yeah, like Spark have the, the field type like array, and it's pretty common, like a dense vector, sparse vector, have all, all like that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a broader one, too. so with Fusion, you can put in, so all of our data scientists use different tools, right? Fusion and Jupyter and Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. And do you get the general sense that Zeppelin is just taking Jupyter and Oh, so for Jupyter, it's like it's very good at uh, Python. 
So if I only use Python, I would definitely use Jupyter because Jupyter have more features. So compared to Jupyter, Zeppelin is like uh, not very complete. Like uh, it has, if you see the list of uh, things, uh, the shortcuts Jupyter can do, it's much longer than Zeppelin. Yeah. So it can like combine cells very easily, save. But the problem with Jupyter currently, they don't support Spark and Scala very well yet. So the Zeppelin is much better than uh, Jupyter on the support for the Scala part. And then it's pretty convenient that as long as you use Zeppelin, you can, as I show, you can import the Python package and run Python. But the, the difference here is like uh, Zeppelin don't ship with Python. It just, uh, uh, what I do in the back is find where is your Python in the path. And then you have to use pip install somewhere else and then to install your package. But in Jupyter, you can just like uh, pip install directly in the notebook. It's much more convenient. With Zeppelin, is it easy to share your notebook results with people who don't have access to your original data sources? And if, if you're like if I uh, Oh, so then you can only show the results. You cannot run it if yeah. you they don't connect to the data source, right? Yeah, but you know, so it supports people. So we're trying to create um, a report like a notebook type report for a client. Mm -hmm. And we want to share what we found and we discovered with all my previous engines. Mm -hmm. But they won't have access to necessarily to our data set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, or like HTML. Yeah, it's mainly HTML and the URL. H PDF, the printout is pretty oh, ugly. Yeah. So. Oh, it's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. So, so it's HTML. <laughs> <laughs> so it has the function actually. Uh, So you can easily, like uh, here, you can export this note and then it will save as a JSON or HTML and then you can import it later. And also you can connect to a GitHub repo. Then if other people can access your repo then. So the full version control is thing. So. All right, thanks. Thank you.